What up, y'all? Y'all tuned into this is hip hop hosted by yours truly, Architect. Once again, please take a moment to like, follow, subscribe, share this content. This episode is sponsored by Just For You Family Support Services. If you or a loved one needs help with substance abuse recovery, mental health issues, anger management, or domestic violence counseling, call 1-855-JST, the number 4-Y-O-U. That's 1-855-JST, the number 4-U. Or you could visit the site that you see on your screen. That's just the number four you family support svc.org. I also want to give a big shout out to Black Line Global and everybody over at Cornerstone Unlimited for making sure we stay powered over here. We got an interesting interview. Um, I've known this brother for quite a while. Um, hang on one second. Let me switch screens. As you can see on the screen, uh, we got my brother Cuba Pete on the line with us. What's going on with you, man? Uh, yeah, you're right. How you doing? Peace, peace, man. Good to have you on. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. <coughs> yeah, so I'm right, all the way from the UK, but I was uh, getting worried the time difference was off for a second there, but now it's sorted. Yeah, yeah. Nah, we uh, we had, you know, I got a little sick one home today, so my timing was thrown off with the show. But I appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, just just for those who don't know you, because we have a lot of common Facebook friends. But for those who don't know who Cuban Pete is, um, please just tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, I just was listening to the uh, the Spoils Award joint. I was just playing that video for everybody. Um, so talk to them a little bit about your background in hip hop. Um, I mean, yeah, I've been down in hip hop since late eighties, I suppose, uh, mid eighties. Um, but I started off doing custom gear for people, doing like jackets, caps, sneakers, stuff like that. Um, graffiti type designs, things like that, their names and all the, that business. Um, and I was also doing the digital artwork, like CD covers and flyers and that. But I realised I was doing a lot of work for rappers and MCs, um, and I'd always done a bit myself. I, I know, you know, I'd only dabbled. I'd done open mics mainly and things like that. Um, and I decided to take it a bit more serious and get involved. Realised I knew a lot of contacts that would help me. Um, and I started to put my music out a bit more. So, uh, how early were you exposed to hip hop? You mentioned the, the early '80s. How, you know, how, how, what was your first experience with hip hop, and, and made you want to get involved with it? In the UK, there was a lot of house music, dance acts that had MCs on. Um, Eric B and Rakim, Follow the Leader, they did a dance remix. And there was a lot of shows on TV that sort of tried to mix all three um, sort of things, you know, dance and hip hop and a bit of reggae in there or whatever. Um, and that was my first sort of exposure. I mean, I I must have heard things in the charts before that, but you know, that was the sort of first time I started listening properly. Right. Uh, I mean, Salt and Pepper came in, people like that, Eric B and Rakim, um, you know, and, yeah, it just sort of took off from there. Right. So you say you do design work. I mean, I know that, but for the listeners, like you say, you do custom stuff. Um, over the years, like how how has hip hop changed in the UK? Um, from the '80s to the '90s, like what are the changes that you've seen, and are those changes good? <laughs> um, some of them. I mean, obviously, being from that time, I've there's a lot of people I so came up with that have changed themselves in the sense that. You know, they're going for more mainstream acceptance because they haven't made the money they were hoping or whatever, or they've just grown up and found they need money, obviously. Um, you know, and people are like, oh, yeah, it's not so bad. I'll put a bit of auto-tune on there or get some singers on this and that and the other. And, you know, I mean, I'm mean, i not going to – I'm not against anybody trying to make money, but, you know, as somebody who is strictly hip-hop and prefers boom bap and stuff like that, it, I don't know. I'm not that keen on it, but – but I'm experimenting. I'm experimenting myself with different styles. You know, I mean, I've, I don't totally hate trap beats, <laughs> but yeah. you know, I'm sort of. I'm doing. I'm doing the odd track here and there. I've got a couple of tracks on this. Um, I'm doing an album called West Mids to North East, um, and it's from me in the West Midlands, coming up north to the North East, um, and so I'm getting local artists from here and there on there, um, and I'm sort of a trying to appeal to a UK audience more because I do a lot of work with American um, artists. Um, so I'm trying to bring people around me through a bit more 
um, and expose them to people who, you know, have been exposed to me through these American artists. So, see how it goes. Yeah, no doubt. Well, we talking to Cuban Pete of C75 out in the UK. Once again, this is hip hop hosted by Architect. Um, take a moment to to follow him on Facebook. Um, you see the group up on the screen. Um, like his YouTube stuff. I I really do this show to kind of support real hip hop, if you know what I mean. And I have a um, I have a thing with this group where I don't. I'm not playing any trap music. I'm not playing anything with auto tune on it. Really, I mean, you know, the maybe in the background something like that. But with this group, I really want to focus on giving people a platform that have have been in hip hop and aren't mainstream. Um, because hip hop to me is underground. So for those who never been to the UK, um. What what was it like growing up, you know, being a hip hop kid? Because I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of people adopted the culture, they adopted the dress, and was, you know, in the '90s, how was hip hop looked at in the UK? Was it looked at as like, you know, because here it was looked at kind of like, uh, uh, people didn't like it at first. It was just something done in small little niche groups. But as it became more popular, it developed here in the states. Did you experience that over there as well? Yeah, I mean. There was a time in the UK when people, British rappers used to put on American accents and, you know, people like London Posse came along and sort of squashed that as quickly as they could. Um, but when I was, I mean, I grew up through the 90s, the golden era, and so that's when a lot of British, British acts were finding themselves as a whole scene called Britcore, um, which is groups like Hijack that were down with Ice-T's Rhyme Syndicate, um, or Cash 22, Duke. Um, Son of Noise, a bunch of people like that played um, and they were just finding themselves musically, there was a whole the UK sound was a lot sparser I found, beat wise um, but it was always hardcore and underground um, and that was something I loved about it um, they weren't trying to compete with the American acts so much um, it was more about getting that UK sound through um, and obviously everybody's on Grimes dick now, which is like came after UK hip hop. And to hear Westwood tell it, you'd think it was hip hop, but mm. you know that's uh, it's different. But but no, no, it, it's grown. Um, there's a lot of artists doing their own thing still. You know, it's a whole scene by itself sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. What well, was there? Uh, you know, growing up in in the UK doing hip hop, was hip hop ever looked at as a as a black thing? Like, you know, it was weird to see white guys rapping or engaged in the culture at all. Oh God, yeah. I mean, I grew up in a um, small town called Canuck in the West Midlands, and it's pretty much a white rock town basically. I mean, there wasn't. I think there was one record store, um, apart from my. Like, other high street stores that sold chart music, that was it. Uh, there was one little record store that sold vinyl, um, old rock stuff again, you know. Uh, there was nothing there, really. Um, I, but I was close to Birmingham, Second City, and uh, Wolverhampton, and there was a lot more black areas around there. Um, but a lot of my mates thought, oh, he likes black music, he wants to be black, you know. Always got accused of that as a white kid. Um, he's a wigger, you know, and all this business. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> but you're always going to get that. Yeah. But no, I mean, there's that many. There was a lot of white kids got into it, and there's a lot of white rappers in the UK, um, which is good and sometimes bad because not everybody fully understands or appreciates the culture sometimes. And with all this race stuff coming through recently with social media, um, there's a lot of white British MCs I've noticed that have let themselves down by, you know, showing they don't really understand the culture and stuff, and it's a bit sad, really, but um, but there's a lot of real heads out there that do and have been in the game for years um, and educate through their music to their white fans, you know, so there's a bit of a mixture. Right. So, again, we're talking to Cuban Pete, C75 Designs out of the UK. Uh, real quick, once again, I want to bring up this screen. Again, if you are in Nassau or Suffolk County and need help, please reach out to Just For You Family Support Services. You see the number on the screen. We want to thank them for sponsoring this episode. Of course, if you would like to sponsor an episode, you see the information on your screen right now. And once again, we're talking to Cuban Pete out in the UK. Um, so real quick, while I pull you back up on the screen, 
Uh, my next question is is quite simple. Um, does Cuban Pete co-sign skinny jeans? <laughs> I can't even fit in them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were in a shop and uh, my wife made me try on a pair just for a laugh. And I got them up to my knees and that was it. I was like, nah, nah, I can't be doing it. <laughs> but no, there's nothing worse than walking down the street behind someone and you're half on your phone, half looking up and you're like, oh yeah. And then it's like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. That, just... that moment you thought it was a. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that error. <laughs> I've made that error. Difficult, difficult time. times for straight men. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Who's on Cuban Pete's top five? Uh, uh, and there's no right or wrong, and there's no need to give it in order from best to. <laughs> but who's in Cuban Pete's top five? And then I got to ask you this dually because you're from the UK, so I got to ask it two ways. Top five UK MCs. Wow. Top five all-around MCs. Who's on Ooh. your list? Jeez. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, growing up, I always had people say, like, oh, who's your favorite rapper? And it's like, well, Australian, American, British. You know, I listen to all sorts of stuff. So um, all time, I'd say I'm mean, pretty much the obvious ones. I mean, I know there's a lot of hate on Tupac MC-wise, but he had a big impact. Mm -hmm. um, KRS-1, definitely. Uh, Rakim, definitely. Um, you got two left. Really, do, I really don't want to put Eminem in there because. <laughs> See, I, well, you're like me. Uh, this is one of them difficult things to do because you can't. Five is not enough. It, no matter what list you make, uh -huh. there's probably not enough space. But so I ask it a different way. Um, for you, who are the most influ influential UK MCs that I might not know about? For me, Blade um, from London, he did the independent thing um, and sort of blew that up. He, he was selling his own vinyl out on the streets. Uh, I mean, not just CDs and stuff, he was out there with a bag with his own, own vinyl. Um, and he definitely influenced me from just his whole style of music, but also the entrepreneurship and all that. Um, who else? London Posse, definitely. Um, Bionic and Rodney for bringing out the uh, British accents, you know, they did all the cockmel. No, they are, you know, they are cockney, you know, they did that, that style of rhyming. Um, from further up north, Ruthless Rap Assassins. Um, I loved their killer album. Um, it was very experimental while still being strictly hip-hop, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, some people say, oh, I'm experimental, and it means they've, they've gone pop, basically. But no, it wasn't like that. Um, just uh, very innovative and uh, influential. Task Force, definitely. Chester P and uh, Farmer G, they, I mean, they have been very influential. The whole There's a whole sound sort of thing that sort of followed what they did. All right. Um, so we're talking to Cuban Pete out in the UK. Um, exactly where are you in the UK, Pete? I'm in the northeast, a um, little town called Redcar by the sea. Um, I mean, I'm from the Midlands originally, but everybody who comes over that I work with from America, like, oh, yeah, we'll hook up when, when I'm down in London. It's like, no, it's about four hours' drive, you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> I can't just pop down after work or nothing. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I'm a bit out of the way. I mean, I've moved from small town called Canuck up to a small town, Redcar, and... You know, it's not very hip hop around here either. To be fair, it's uh, more dance, if anything, I suppose. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, yeah, I'm sort of tucked away. Here. So are you guys well, out there breast on what's going over on over here with artists like Takashi Six Nine? Six Nine, um, you you know what's going on with him and and the whole case that he got going on. Yeah, we get all that clickbait shit over here as well. <laughs> right. I, I think um, personally, I think it's nonsensical. But what do you think about the direction that hip hop is taking as a as an international uh, uh, art form? Because over here, the emphasis is put so much on the negativity. Um, do you kind of get that same energy over there? I think, yeah. I mean, there's a, all, a lot of the commercial stuff, definitely. Uh, there's a lot more negativity in it. Um, not that there's not um, artists that try and push positivity, but obviously the negativity always gets pushed. That's why we know about people like Takeshi and that. 
you know, it's all the trolling and all that shit that I don't even find funny though. But <laughs> you know, it's all the bullshit that gets pushed because it's controversial and everybody's got an opinion on it. So you know, it means more clicks, more likes, more money for this person and that person. Um, you know, I I don't even count a lot of it as hip hop. It's just clickbait rap. You know, it's it's not a thing. I couldn't even name. I was going to say two or three Takeshi tracks. I'm struggling to think of one actually. You know, it's same with Kodak Black, Yachty, and all them. You know, it's it's nothing. I I don't even count it. It's like the music is secondary, which in a way it always has been in the music business, but you know, it's more obvious now. And you know, with all the social be. media involved. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you said that. What, what impact do you think social media? You know, well, do you think the impact that social media has been good or bad, or is it is it a double edged sword? Which is kind of where I'm at. I see social media now is is being able to put me directly in touch with consumers, but then I got to deal with everything else. So how do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, it's good in the sense that there's people I've collaborated with that I probably would never have in the past because I wouldn't have come in personal contact with them as such. Um, but yeah, all the, like I say, all the clickbait rap, you know, it's people post things on Twitter and they get so many likes and they get they get a following off that. And then it doesn't matter how good or bad the music is, labels are just like, oh yeah, they've got a following, they've got a ready-made audience, you know, let's put some money behind them and they just carry on. Yeah, do you think that hurts the culture, though? Yeah, because I mean, there was some British uh, soap actress got kicked off a of soap over here. Um, she's she made some tweets about six years ago, and she used the N word um, as well as uh, called somebody gay um, in a derogatory way. Um, but I mean, she didn't say either slur in a an offensive way as such, you know, it was meant to be a bit of fun with her mates, but it showed she clearly didn't understand the culture, thinking she could use that word for a start. Um, but, yeah, it just, social media just blows everything up out of context, and, you know, it gives hip-hop a bad name. She's now blaming hip-hop for things she said on social media, and, you know, you can read the comments on posts about it, and people who don't know about hip hop just see it as this big negative thing. It's all drugs and gangs and people getting stabbed and you know being racist and that. So no, it's it's good in some ways. Um, there's a lot of rappers wouldn't be, even be known at all if it wasn't for social media, <laughs> probably myself included, because you can do it for free with no money behind you particularly. Um, but yeah, from that point of view, it hurts it a lot because people think it's something it's not right and then attach a negative stigma to it or, or make it something you can blame whatever you want to blame on that i wanted to propone yeah. that um you know people make this comparison when they say oh you know if hip-hop artists aren't allowed to talk about violence and guns you know well arnold schwarzenegger or the movies have the violence and guns but my argument is always this arnold schwarzenegger left the the, the uh movie set and and didn't continue the role <laughs> he didn't he didn't keep the yeah. role going once he left the set he wasn't commando or, or rather or, you know stallone wasn't rambo when he got off set he wasn't going around trying to fight entire police departments in hip-hop we try yeah. to you know portray what's in the records i think to a fault sometimes for the younger generation anyway because like you said, it's so attractive and it's selling records and then the clickbait and you can get all these views. And, you know, I, I see it as, a, like I said, it's a really, really serious double-edged sword. So we've been talking to Cuban Pete, C75 Designs out in the UK, uh, hip-hop artist, hip-hop connoisseur, long-time, you know, designer. Um, I want to thank everybody that's been tuning in, hitting the like for me. I appreciate it. Um, let everybody know where they can find you, Pete, where, where, you know, where they can get in touch with you. How do they get their custom gear from you? Let them know all that good stuff. Well, c75live.com is the website. I mean, it's got all my details on there, contact info and everything. You can keep up to date on news. There's um, music videos on there. Um, every, everybody, because I've got a few people down with c75live, um, and there's links to everybody's music and stuff on there, all the artists involved. Um, so, yeah, that's the main site. And I'm also on Facebook, I mean, c75designs, that links up. That's like Twitter, Instagram, 
Um, and uh, you can find me on Facebook on that as well. Wonderful. Yeah, I really appreciate you, you know, appreciate you taking the time to be with me today and do this interview. I hope to have you back on real soon. Um, you know, and, and anything you're promoting, you always got an outlet here. Um, and you're, you know, you're part of that first group of people that submit and this is hip hop, you know, hosted by architects. So salute to you for being a part of the show. And, um, I'm, a, I'm going to play this, this song one more time. Is there anybody you want to shout out, um, you know, out there in the UK over here in the States, give all your shout outs or your plugs right now. Um, but I'll give a shout out to Soraya, my manager. She's great behind me 100%. Um, B Divine is doing a lot of work with me. Um, One Mike and Test Squad, uh, Hellraiser and GGO, um, Mind Power with Crumb Snatcher. Um, all those people, we're all doing good work. Uh, Gorilla Army, can't forget uh, the original Mr. Blue, he does a lot of my uh, mixing and stuff. Um, and we're part of the same crew. So, yeah, all those people I work with regularly, and uh, we're all trying to bring each other through. Well, the platform is open to all of the people he just mentioned. Um, you know, just get in touch. Just make sure you join the group. This is Hip Hop hosted by Architect, and I will repeat, there's no mumble rap. There's no drill music. There's no trap music allowed in the group. Um, none of the admins are going to allow it to be posted. So when you come in the group, if it's not hip hop, you're not going to get, it's not going to get any shine. It's just a group full of bloggers, vloggers, artists, people like yourself that love the culture and want to help promote other people. So everybody he mentioned, get in touch. Come on, get on the show, you know, uh, spread love. This is what we're here for. Again, Cuban Pete, um, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Like I said, you're probably our third, um, you know, interview on here. So you're, you're cemented as part of the foundation that's helping build This Is Hip Hop. And, um, you know, we're going to be dropping a mixtape, a compilation album. So if you're an artist and you got music, you want to put it on there. We here, for, you know, we're going to support that. We got distribution through Sony yeah, Orchard. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to be doing that. Cuban Pete has been real. I appreciate you coming on, bro. We're going to play the spoils of war one more time. I'm on the closeout. Once again, I want to thank you for being on. I want to shout out our sponsors just for you. Family Support Services, Blackline Global, Cornerstone Unlimited. Big shouts out to the whole team. Um, you was with Cuban Pete today on This Is Hip Hop, hosted by Architect. Peace and love, my brother. Peace, huh? Thanks for having me. Yep, absolutely, man. Appreciate you.